What's up, guys? I want to talk about the anabolic diet. Um, the anabolic diet was a book written by this guy, Dr. Mauro Di Pasquale, and this came out about two decades ago. And I think it's really important that we give him some respect because it seems like a lot of people have just been rehashing his diet for the last couple decades and rebranding it as their own. But um, the anabolic diet was kind of the original, like OG cyclical ketogenic diet for power lifters, bodybuilders, and athletes. Um, it was, the book was written by a guy named Dr. Mauro Di Pascale, who um, I've got lots of respect for. He was um, a very accomplished power lifter, and he set records in like six different weight classes, which is amazing. I mean, that's like that's a feat right there. So this guy was an accomplished lifter. I, I heard he still had a over 600 pound squat. And this guy's got to be over 50-something years old. So I'm um, very impressive. He invented this diet, invented it. Well, he came up with this diet as a way, as an attempt to mimic the effects of anabolic steroids without the side effects. So, hey, pretty noble cause. Um, trying to help people manipulate their body composition without using exogenous hormones that can be very dangerous and that can mess up your body and create all kinds of physiological issues down the road. So, pretty cool. Now, the way he set about doing this was the manipulation of insulin and theoretically the manipulation of growth hormone and testosterone levels by feeding a high-fat diet for most of the week. Um, for most people, it would be five days of a high-fat, like 65% fat, high-protein, like 30-35% protein, super low-carb, under 30 grams of carbohydrates, so like, like keto diet levels of carbs probably a little bit more protein than most people are going to do on a keto diet, but um, a yeah, high fat, high protein diet, um, keeping insulin levels relatively low and steady, keeping blood sugar relatively stable during the week, um, with theoretically an increase in growth hormone and testosterone production from all the fats and from the, from the absence of high blood sugar and insulin uh, would theoretically bring up the, uh, the growth hormone levels and help you burn fat and build some muscle. And then on the weekends, dropping the protein levels and dropping the fat levels significantly for either one day or for some individuals two days. And some individuals might even be more or might even be less. But um, you do these like carb refeeds where it's, where it's high carbohydrate, very low fat, and then low protein too. Now I think that's kind of an interesting, kind of an interesting little caveat to this diet and yeah I don't think there's ever been any studies done on um, on a diet like this but when you think about it it makes a lot of sense how your body might want to super compensate after you drop your protein down for a little bit when you increase your protein and fat might want to super compensate store more protein create more muscle um, after storing all this glycogen so it's an attempt to reconcile the benefits of fat adaptation, uh, tapping into your fat stores to build to build muscle and burn fat for energy, as well as the strategic use of carbohydrates for performance. So basically, you I mean you, you got two substrates there. You got two different fuels. You're adapted to burning fat. You pump in the carbs, and you've got the carbs when you need them. Um, it's a really intelligently designed diet. And that's probably why you see a lot of people just rehashing the same diet today. Um, there's a lot of similarities between this diet and a really popular one that's out now. Um, I actually interviewed the guy who came out with this other diet. I didn't realize um, that they were so similar at the time. But um, uh, the, the whole carb night thing that people are doing is basically the same thing. Um, almost everything in carb night was originally in Mauro Di Pasquale's book, the anabolic diet. So if you're interested in cyclical ketogenic diet, check that book out. I kind of just gave you a basic rundown of what it is. Um, let me just go ahead and say that a cyclical ketogenic diet is an advanced technique for advanced dieters. It's not for everybody. Um, I wouldn't recommend this unless you're already at a relatively low body fat, unless you've already dieted before in the past, and you are familiar with how your body reacts to both carbohydrate-based diet and fat-based and fat -based diets. Um, that being said, it can be a very effective diet. It can be very useful um, because you're able to effectively utilize fats. And the longer you do a diet like this, the longer you adapt yourself to 
being able to burn fats, the more you're going to get out of it. So you're going to be able to effectively use fats and you're going to be able to have large stores of carbohydrates to use when you need them. Now when you adapt to a fat-based diet, your threshold to where you start needing carbohydrates and like heavy lifts, you, it raises. So where before you might be burning glycogen at a certain energy, uh, energy output, it's going to raise that, that threshold and you're going to be burning fat for that entire stratus of, uh, of energy output until you reach a certain point. Now, this can be really beneficial to power lifters or bodybuilders or any types of explosive athletes. Um, the ability to effectively use fat as a fuel is really important for athletes. So this is a diet that's, I think it's a really well formulated diet. Um, I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. I don't think the carbohydrate loads are, necess are necessary for most people. Um, but yeah, cyclical ketogenic diets are a tool and you can use them. But for some people, it might be like playing with fire. So for some, for some individuals, the carbohydrate loading phases could be a psychological benefit. It could help them adhere to the diet, but for others, it could just be like this huge problem, this huge uh, crutch. So um, that's why I say it's only for advanced dieters who have good control over their body composition and um, who kind of know what they're doing. So let me also say that uh, I think it's really silly that a lot of these cyclical ketogenic diets nowadays are kind of branded in a way to appeal to our cravings for junk food um, as a justification for eating junk food once a week I think cyclical ketogenic diets are stupid if you just want an excuse to eat a bunch of crap if it fits your mouth food if that's what you want to do then that's fine be honest with yourself and realize that it's not gonna favorably affect body composition now if you're gonna do it intelligently and intake higher carbohydrate for a certain period of time while dropping your fats um, and manipulating it accordingly and not just shoving a bunch of Pop-Tarts and ch t freaking turnovers and donuts down your mouth, then yeah, this can be a really effective diet. Look, when you first start a keto type diet, um, you're gonna feel a little bit flat, you're gonna feel a little bit drained, but your energy is gonna come back and you're gonna have nice solid sustained energy all day long if you give it some time and you let yourself adapt. Um, now even Dr. Mauro Di Pasquale talks about the, ne the necessity of giving this diet time. If you just try like a cyclical ketogenic diet right off the bat, you do it for a couple weeks and you're already carb loading after your first five days, you're gonna feel like crap. You're gonna be in between metabolisms. You're never gonna effectively use fat as a fuel and your, your body's just gonna be craving carbohydrates the whole time because it knows it's gonna be coming every few days um, and you're just kind of, you're just wasting time. So if you're gonna do something like the anabolic diet, give it a few months. Um, at least, I would say wait at least two to three weeks before playing with carbohydrates. Um, if you're, if you're craving carbs during that for, like induction phase, it's not time yet. You want to wait till your energy levels are steady. Um, you want to make sure your electrolytes are kept in check. You've got your magnesium, your potassium, and your sodium levels are right. And you want to make sure that you actually are kind of adapted to those fat burning pathways before you start throwing carbohydrates in again, or else the diet's really unlikely to work for you. So. I want to give a shout out, another shout out to Dr. Mauro Di Pasquale for all his accomplishments, um, for writing a diet that was so that was so well formulated that people are still rehashing and like I don't even know, possibly plagiarizing that shit today. So um, yeah, man, um, lots of respect to you, Dr. Mauro Di Pasquale. And then another thing, if you're dieting and you're trying to change your body image, um, trying to change how you look. The first priority should be your health. Lots of people, everyone wants to lose weight. Um, everyone's being marketed these fad weight loss diets. Um, lose weight quick. Like, I mean, pills and supplements and th these images are being sold to you 
and you're, it's kind of just being shoved down your throat. Take a step back and realize what you're really chasing. Um, the most important thing, your real priority should be your health. If you're trying to lose weight, it should be, you should be doing it in a healthy way. Um, there's nothing wrong with like these IIFYM diets. Um, if, that's, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I think it's really important that people prioritize their health when they're losing weight. I mean, like eating a bunch of processed crap foods, eating a bunch of preservatives all the time, uh, food colorings, like foods that have a hundred ingredients on them that are so far from their natural state. This this isn't healthy. This isn't sustainable long term. Um, I'm all about getting back to basics, eating whole foods, eating real foods. Um, you know, it's like if you want to have like a, a Twinkie every once in a while, and it's just every once in a while, you, you, you're not going to be like majorly damaging your health. But if your whole diet is based around your cheat days and like, you know, sugar rush, if it fits your mouth, then you should really reevaluate and, um, and try to come at this from a place of becoming healthy, of fixing your metabolism, of doing it in a sustainable way. If you lose weight real fast, it's really likely that you're going to gain it back just as quickly. Um, it's about establishing healthy habits that you can maintain for your entire life. Um, it's about building a solid foundation of habits, of healthy habits that you can, I mean, like the, <laughs> that you can live with for the rest of your life. You know, a diet is not just something that you do, you lose weight, and then you go back to eating whatever crap you want, living the crappy lifestyle. Um, and there's so many other aspects other than diet that affect your health. Um, getting proper sleep, getting your light cycles right, getting sunshine, vitamin D. These are all equally important as the food that you eat. So um, I'm all about getting back to basics, eating whole foods, eating minim minimally processed foods, and um, yeah, and coming at it from a place of health. You gotta fix what's in here first. It does. Who cares how pretty you make your shell? Who cares how beautiful your body is if you're an emotional, psychological monster and you make the world miserable? I mean, come on. Like, let's get let's get right in your mind. Get right in your psychology. Get right in your heart. Get your intentions straight. And um, while you're dieting. You should be working on your internal self. You know, what good does it do if you're the hottest freaking body? Who cares? If you're not healthy, if you're not mentally, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever you want to call it, healthy, then what's the point of having your beautiful body? I mean, if that, if you're, if you're comfortable with that, if you want to just be hot, die young, snort a bunch of coke go to EDM parties and like take a bunch of drugs and look sexy before you die, that's fine. Um, <laughs> that's your thing. That's cool. But uh, yeah, there's more to life than just looking good. There's more to life than your body. This is just a shell. So fill your shell up. Fill your vessel up with value. Fill your vessel up with valuable content. You know, what you take in here, what you take in here manifest through here through here so yeah you guys stay focused stay focused on your goals um prioritize health if you're trying to lose weight health should come first so thanks for watching thanks for supporting the channel um i've got i set aside a little bit more time next month so i can actually take on a few more clients so if you want coaching you can check out www.primaledgehealth.com slash coaching um and uh, yeah, check me out on Facebook or subscribe down below. Make sure you like the video. Thanks for your support. Stay focused. Prioritize your health. And if you want to do a cyclical ketogenic diet, make sure you do it right. Don't just turn it into binging and all these other weird things that people like to do with uh, cyclical ketogenic diets. But yeah, check out The Anabolic Diet by Dr. Mauro Di Pasquale. He's the originator of this whole cyclical ketogenic diet that's being rebranded and sold under other names. So if you're doing carb night, you're actually doing The Anabolic Diet. All right, peace, guys.